everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. The easiest way to get your code to run faster is to make it do less work. Assuming you have already chosen good algorithms and you have reduced the amount of data you are processing, the easiest way to execute fewer instructions is to compile your code down to machine code. Python offers a number of options for this. But before exposing these options, I want to mention few things here. Keep in mind that you will need to take care to balance the requirement of code adaptability and team velocity when deciding which route to take. And it's worth noting that performing CPU and memory profiling your code will probably start you thinking about higher level optimization that you might apply. In our previous videos, we have talked about different techniques and algorithmic changes for optimizations. These algorithmic changes could help you avoid doing unnecessary work in your code and Python expressivity helps you to spot these algorithmic opportunities. Okay, the options we have are following. The very first one is Cython. This is the most commonly used tool for compiling to C, covering both NumPy and normal Python code but it requires some knowledge of C. Second one is Shed Skin, an automatic Python to C converter for non-NumPy code. The third one is Python, a new compiler for both NumPy or non-NumPy code. And the fourth one is Numba. It is a new compiler specialized for the NumPy code. And the fifth one is PyPy. PyPy is a stable JIT just-in-time compiler for non-NumPy code that is a replacement for the normal Python executables. But we can split all of these options into two sets. The first one is Tools for Compiling Ahead of Time, AOT. Cython, Shetskin, and Python can fit in this category. And the second one is Compiling Just-in-Time, JIT. Numba and PyPy can fit into this category. If you're dealing with Python code and batteries included libraries without NumPy, then Cython, Shutterskin, and PyPy are your main choices. But if you're working with NumPy, then Cython, Numba, and Python are the right choices. All of these tools support Python 2.7 and Python 3 also. Let's rather explore the basics of some of these tools so you can get a better idea. So the very first tool we are going to discuss here is Cython. Cython is a compiler that converts type annotated Python into a compiled extension module. The type annotation are C-like. This extension can be imported as a regular Python module using import statement. Getting started with Cython is simple, but it does have a learning curve that must be climbed with each additional level of complexity and optimization. Cython is a fork of Pyrex, which has been announced in 2002, that expands the capability beyond the original aims of Pyrex. Libraries that use Cython include SciPy, Scikit-Learn, AlexML, and ZMQ. Cython can be used by a setup.py script to compile a module. It can also be used interactively in IPython via a magic command. Typically, the type are annotated by developers although some automated annotation is possible. Let's try to explore different ways to utilize Cython to speed up your code by writing some code here. We will write a function for Pythagoras theorem. If you don't know about it, this theorem states that in a right-angled triangle, the sum of square of the legs of the triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Pythagorean triples are any three positive integers like a, b, and c such that a square plus b square is equal to c square. You can see the diagram here. So let's write a function that find all the Pythagorean triples whose members are not greater than the provided limit. Okay, so I will define a function named as count underscore triples and this function takes a limit parameter here. And inside the function, I will initialize the result variable with zero. Then I will write three for loops as stated here for A, B, and C. Then inside the most internal loop, I will say 
if c square is greater than e square plus b square, we will break the loop here. Otherwise, if c square is equal to the e square plus b square, we will increment the result, then outside all of these loops, we will return the result. Okay, then I will define the main function to utilize this function. And inside the main function, I will start the timer and save the time in start variable. Then call the count and disk trippers function and I save the result in result variable. And I'm passing here 1000 as a limit. Then once again, we will utilize the time module to just calculate the duration and print the result here. So you can see the result here. Apparently, there are 881 triples. And you can see the time here that this function has been taken. That's not too long, but long enough to be annoying. If we want to find more triples up to a higher limit, we should find a way to make it go quicker. Okay, that's great. We have done with our function. Let's try to utilize different way from site and module to boost up this code. The very first option we have is boosting with pi x import. This is the easiest way to use the Cython. This is a statement that compiles your Cython code on the fly and lets you enjoy the benefits of native optimization without too much trouble. You need to put the code to send to noise in its own module. Write one line of setup in your main program and then import it as usual. Let's see what it looks like. I moved the function to its own file called the path underscore triples.pyx. The extension is important for Cython. And then inside this file, the line that activates the Cython is import pyx import and pyx import dot install. Then it just imports the module with the count underscore triples function and later invokes it in the main function. Okay, now if we run this function this time, you can see that actually the pure Python function ran 50% longer. We got this boost by adding a single line, not bad at all. But fortunately, that's not the only way. There's other ways available to optimize our code using science and module. While PyX import is really convenient during development, it works only on pure Python modules. Often, when optimizing code, you want to reference native C libraries or Python extension modules to support those and also to avoid dynamically compiling on every run. You can build your own Cython extension module. You need to add a little setup.py file and remember to build it before running your program whenever you modify the Cython code. So I will create a file setup.py and inside this file, we have to import a setup from distutils.core and the second module we need to import Cythonize from Cython.build. Then inside the setup function, I will provide ext underscore modules equal to Cythonize and inside this, I will provide my own file, which is actually an extension module named as pyth underscore triples.pyx. Then we simply need to build our extension module by running a simple command python setup.py build underscore ext and we have to pass minus minus in place so it will build in the same location as you can see from the output cython generated a c file called pyth underscore triples dot c and compiles it a prayed from specific dot so file which is the extension module that python can now import like any other native extension module Okay, let's drop the PyX import module and run our program once again. You can see the result here. The result is pretty much the same as with PyX import. However, note that I'm mirroring only the runtime of the synthesized code. I'm not mirroring how long it takes PyX import to compile the synthesized code on the fly. In big programs, this can be significant. That's great, we have explored two different ways to utilize the Cyton module. But just hold on. Let's take it to the next level. Cython is more than Python and adds optional typing. Here, another option we have is adding types to your code. So we are utilizing different variables here. You can see result, A, B, and C. So let me define the types for all of these variables here. So I will define cdef int result equals to zero, cdef int a equal to zero, and cdef int b equal to zero, and same thing for C. Then rest of the code will be same uh, also in the python underscore triples file. 
in the main that PY fired. You can see the result here. That's amazing. By defining a couple of integers, the program runs too much faster. That's almost a 250 times improvement. That's great. These are some of the basic ways to utilize a Cython module to boost off your code. Cython can produce the two orders of magnitude of performance improvement for little effort. If you develop the non-trivial software in Python, Cython is a no-brainer. It has very little overhead and you can introduce it gradually to your code base. That's it. Let's try to explore another option which is Namba. Namba from Continuum Analytics is a just-in-time compiler that specializes in NumPy code, which it compiles via the LLVM compiler at runtime. It doesn't require a pre-compilation pass, so when you run it against a new code, it compiles each annotated function for your hardware. The beauty is that you provide a decorator telling it which function to focus on and then you let Numba take over. It aims to run on all standard NumPy code. If you use NumPy arrays and have non-vectorized code that it reads over many items, then Numba should give you a quick and very painless win. One drawback when using Numba is the toolchain. It uses LLVM and this has many dependencies. It is recommended to install Numbas by using Anaconda's distribution. But you can install it using simple pip command also by running a command as pip install Numba. Okay, let's try to write some code to understand the Numba in more detailed way. So I'll write a function to calculate the standard deviation. The function named as std underscore dev, which takes the list of axes. And inside this function, I'll initialize the mean with zero and loop through the axes to calculate the mean. So the mean will be equal to the sum of all of the axes divided by the length of the axis list. Then I will initialize the variance as ms equal to zero and loop through the axis once again to calculate the variance. Variance is actually the square of standard deviation. So if we take the square root of the variance, we will get the standard deviation. And finally, we will return it. Okay, so let's try to run this function with 10 million numbers. But at this stage, I want to mention that, have you noticed that I'm using the Jupyter Notebook inside the PyCharm IDE? I'll create a detailed video about Jupyter Notebooks in future. Okay, so let's try to run this function with 10 million numbers. So I will use the numpy to generate the list as a equal to np.random.normal. Okay, so let's call this function. You can see the result here. The function takes a couple seconds to compute the standard deviation of the sample. Now, let's import the NJIT decorator from number and decorate our std underscore dev function to create a new function. So I will say from number import NJIT, c underscore std equal to NJIT and inside this, I will pass my own function as std underscore dev. So at this stage, we are creating a new function by utilizing our previous function. So if we call this function and pass the axis list, you can see the result here. The performance improvement might not seem striking, maybe due to some overhead related with interpreting the code in the notebook. Also, please keep in mind that the first time the function is called, Numba will need to compile the function which takes a bit of time. But we can quantify the improvement using the time it magic function. First for the interpreted version of the std underscore dev function and then for the compiled version for c underscore std function. So I will use the time it magic function and call the std underscore dev function and pass the list of axes. You can see the result here. Now let's try to call the c underscore std function with the time it magic function. You can see the result for this function here. The compiled function is approximately 100 times faster. But obviously we didn't have to go into such trouble to compute the standard deviation of our array because we have a function available in the numpy library. If we simply call a.std, it will return the standard deviation. You can see the result, but if we calculate the time taken by the numpy std function, you can see the result here. We see that number is even faster than numpy in this particular case.
And from this statement, you can imagine that how Namba can improve the performance of our code. This is not the Numbaz specific tutorial as we are exploring different options to compile our Python code to C level. But I will make detailed and dedicated videos for Cython, Numba and other options. If you want me to make a video for any specific option, just let me know in the comments below. If you are working on a numeric project, then each of these technologies could be useful. For a detailed look, just take a look under this table here. Numba may offer quick wins for little effort, but it too has limitations that might stop it working well on your code. It is also a relatively young project. Cython probably offers the best result for the widest set of problems, but it does require more effort and has an additional support tax due to its use of mix of Python with C annotations. PyPy is a strong option if you are not using NumPy or other hard to port C extensions. Shedskin may be useful if you want to compile to C and you are not using NumPy or other external libraries. If you are deploying a production tool then you probably want to stick with well understood tools and Cython should be your main choice. Overall, Python and Numba are young but very promising projects. Whereas Cython is very mature, PyPy is regarded as being fairly mature now and should definitely be evaluated for long running processes. As a conclusion to all this explanation, I have introduced various strategies to allow you to specialize your code to different degrees in order to reduce the number of instructions the CPU most execute and increase the efficiency of your programs. Sometimes this can be done algorithmically, although often it must be done manually. Furthermore, sometimes these methods must be employed simply to use libraries that have already been written in other languages. Regardless of the motivation, Python allows us to benefit from the speed ups that other languages can offer on some problems, while still maintaining verbosity and flexibility when it is needed. It is important to note that these optimizations are done in order to optimize the efficiency of CPU instructions only. If you have IO bound processes coupled to a CPU bound problem, simply compiling your code may not provide any reasonable speedups. For these problems, we must rethink our solutions and potentially use parallelism to run different tasks at the same time. I think that's enough for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content of this video. So if you like this content, just give a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.